Well, hey guys, it's Dr. Drake 63 here. Been talking recently about this uh, 1984 Browning BAR. It's uh, not a bad looking gun. Uh, we did though find that we had some cycling issues that uh, I surmised were related to the magazine, which you see right here. And this actually comes right out. And I had surmised that uh, there might be some issues with the feeding, with the leaf springs, something along that line. The other two suspects were the gas system. Might need a good cleaning. We're going to do that today. And uh, also, we're going to replace that magazine with this new one. And it is the correct one for both 243 and 308. Just at first glance, comparing these two, it's hard for me to tell whether there's anything wrong with the older one. I will say that this spring in there is not as firm as the spring in here, so it might be as simple as that. Other thing is the action spring that uh, cycles your bolt. And we were able to get an aftermarket that goes in, it's made for pre-92 BARs, types one and two. And uh, this has a stainless steel guide rod, a new buffer, and the spring itself. And we're gonna change that out. One of the things I thought was possible with uh, failure to feed on, on some of those rounds was that the spring had gotten weak over time, which is pretty common for guns once they get past a certain number of years or a certain number of rounds. So that's what we're gonna do today. And then we'll see how she shoots. Stay tuned. I will tell you, this is the follower on the old magazine and it's kind of dented up. And the bolt traveling over that over time is gonna do that. But compare it to the nice sharp lines of the follower on the new one. Could that have something to do with it? Mm, it's possible. Uh, I think if it is magazine related though, more than anything else, it's gonna be this leaf spring. And you can see right there, it just pops right in. So that's a part you can replace as well. I went ahead and just said, let's, let's get a brand new magazine. If anything, I'd like to have a spare and maybe we'll look for a leaf spring for the older one. So we're gonna take this down to such degree that we can access the gas system and we can take out uh, the guide rod and replace it. Okay, so as we demonstrated before, you wanna take a, a box wrench like this and loosen up this screw right here, which uh, is both your, your lug for your front sling attachment and it also is what holds this stock onto place. Now the other thing I'm going to do is take a crescent wrench and I'm going to loosen this up and it might be on there kind of tight. So I'm making sure, number one, that my receiver has padding on it. I'm not going to scratch stuff on the barrel and I'm going to be able to apply some real good pressure on this. I don't want to take pressure to where I'm putting pressure on, on this, this gas block here and working it against the barrel. We don't wanna we don't wanna bend, break, or any of that, but we need to get this loosened up. So uh, that's what we're gonna do. So on either side of this track, there's a couple spacers that simply slide right out. There's one on either side, and they slide right out. And those are interchangeable parts, but once you get those, you now have the ability to simply take this or off. And again, same thing on the other side. And those come right off. And now it's a matter with this guide rod is I can just just looking at the old spacer there you see right there we're going to replace that apparatus, but basically now it's a matter of just pushing this back and disconnecting the guide rod. 
this thing was a real booger and what I ended up having to do was put the block in a bench vise to make sure that that's the only thing we were turning and I was able to get this screw to loosen up it wasn't easy though it really took a lot of doing and I think the, the biggest reason for that was just simply the fact that uh, probably somebody used too much lube before which you don't want to do on something like this because what it does is actually bakes the thing on there is the back end of the piston and so we're actually going to push that out this side which will enable us to uh, to get that guide rod, rod out and also take a look inside, maybe clean out this chamber a little bit. So here's your gas block screw. You can see I boogered that up a little bit. That sucker was on there tight, but it's still very usable. You can see there's a hole in it. And that allows excess gas to bleed off into the front outside of uh, the guide rod and so forth and you can see that that's where that comes out that's why you get this residue inside the hand guard but this goes in a certain way this needs to be on top to line up with your gas port inside the barrel we're gonna we're gonna clean this down real good but then put it back in dry and as you can see right here that's the inside of your gas block it's not too dirty. I mean, I'm going to I'm going to clean it out good. But uh you do want it to be dry for sure. And once you have that uh that short piston out, it's real easy to go ahead and remove your guide rod and this piece that slides along the front and this is the the part your your piston impacts and drives it back. So, here you go. So I'll, I'll clean the inside of this out good and clean this part real well. And here you see the old guide rod, and there's two pieces of metal here that sandwich on the end. And this is your buffer right here. And this I'm going to replace everything except I'll reuse these two pieces, but the spring, the old guide rod, and all that will go. And the new guide rod is stainless steel, which is a good thing. Here you can see the old buffer. Just showing you the difference between the old spring on the top, new spring on the bottom. You can see that the new spring, oh, is about three-eighths of an inch longer. I reckon it's the same number of coils, but the new coils look like they're just a tiny bit thicker, which is going to help with tension. So I do expect this to have a little bit more forward, uh, forward force when it's closing that bolt. And that might be part of the problem that we discussed, too. So here's my new spring and guide rod assembly. I've got that new buffer sandwiched in there. We're going to do a nice wipe down cleaning of uh, these uh, sidebars as well as uh, those spacers. And we're going to clean these pieces off real good and knock any residue that's inside of, uh, of the gas block as well. I didn't see a lot though. I don't think there's an issue with that being overly dirty. Caliber brush works really well in this. You could probably use a shotgun wire brush as well, but uh, it's not real dirty in there, and this thing is a nice tight fit as far as getting it nice and clean. We'll show you what that looks like when we're done. Nice and shiny and clean, and I have not put lubrication in there. So I've got these pieces clean. I just want to show you how easily this travels in and out. And this is your short, short stroke piston. This is what makes it all happen. Now I'm going to put just the very tiniest, like half a drop on my finger and cover this thing and then wipe it down and then reinsert it. Because I have no interest whatsoever getting involved with gunking this thing up. But you can see there's a little notch and there's a, there's a pin that drifts in there and that's how this sits. And that guarantees that it doesn't turn. It keeps that hole I showed you alive, aligned with uh, the gas port in the barrel, but there's absolutely nothing that's going to keep this from functioning properly. So, gas system is deemed clean. So we've got all this back together, and it's really not hard. Everything goes in easily, slides in. 
Uh, the tabs from these side rails go into a, a notch in the bolt. And the way you can tell that this has a nice free floating and easy gas piston is it just moves easily. It doesn't get stuck up there. And if you push it all the way forward, then then um, it'll drop back down if you just tap the rifle uh, downward on the butt a little bit. And so uh, this gas system is deemed clean, as I said. It's got a new guide ride on, rod on it, a new spring, and everything seems to be in work in order. Now, the last thing I'm going to mention, <clears throat> this front sight hood would slide about halfway off after just a few rounds. And, you know, there's some things I can do to tighten it up, but I've also seen as period correct um, with, with these particular sights, this that has kind of a knurled front, anti-glare, and this fits on much tighter. Now, I think this one looks sleeker, but this one... Um, I think it's going to stay on. That's what I'm most worried about. So we're going to change that out. And that makes for a much tighter fit. Seam diameter and everything else. I I, uh, I wish it was a little bit better fit for this post as far as matching up. But uh needs to do its job and not come off real easy like that other one. I had to give this a good push this time. So we're going to try this out at the range. Of course, I gave the uh, the part of the barrel underneath of the wood a really good wipe down. Get some fingerprints on that and everything else, and you're really not going to like that. But uh, this is uh, an older firearm. It definitely has a few blemishes on it, but I need it to function. As you can see, here's a more functional front sight. But here's the part that I'm really interested in. Is that going to go ahead and, and, and cycle for me now? I've done three things to improve my chances. If you watch the last video, you'll see that I surmised it was probably either magazine or recoil spring or gas system. So today we addressed all three of those. So next thing to do is go and see how this cycles at the range. And then we'll wrap up the video. Very happy with those four on the bottom. Those are my uh, quick follow-up shots, and here's taking a little bit more time. And uh, obviously, we could do a lot better if we had a scope or something of that nature resting on a bench. But uh, very happy with how this is working. You'll also see real quick that that uh, front sight hood stayed on nicely, which is another thing we were trying to accomplish. So uh, overall, got to be happy with the results here. And uh, as you'll see here, I'm going to do some uh, rapid firing, first in slow motion and then in uh, normal speed. Also taking a quick look at the spent brass here you don't see any dings or any marks or anything which is a, a real good sign for a rifle like this it just also shows that it's properly gassed and working the way it should well okay guys nothing makes me happier than when a plan comes together uh, i did bring the old magazine along with me today but uh, did not test it out against the old one for all we know that was the ultimate problem and uh, we get a little bit more time and a little bit more 308 We'll go ahead and, uh, and do that test sometime later on. But uh, point is, is uh, it's fixed rifle, works perfect. Uh, I put 28 rounds through it, which is probably about twice as much as I'm normally gonna put through a hunting rifle at any time. But I needed to make sure that it would work with follow-up shots, that it would work with rapid follow-up shots, that we wouldn't have any kind of hiccups. I tried three different kinds of ammo and it functioned just like a champ. So couldn't be more pleased with the results there. So uh, kind of uh, uh, a longish process, this series of videos. But hey, if you're a guy with a BAR or you're just 
curious about them. Um, I'm hoping that uh, along with me, you learned some stuff, and uh, I enjoyed bringing you this content. Can't wait to take this guy out hunting this fall. In the meantime, I appreciate you guys watching. This is Dr. Drake 63 saying so long.